Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today, let's make a diagonal double fan folded shirt. I'm using a long sleeve George brand shirt, which I purchased in the men's department at Walmart. It's 100% cotton and it's a softer cotton shirt. I'm starting by grabbing one corner of the hem of the shirt and folding it up to the opposite shoulder of the shirt. This isn't going to be a symmetrical fold. Then I'm going to smooth the shirt out and get it to lay as flat as possible. I'm going to wrap an old piece of sinew around the bottom of a washable marker. Then I'm going to place the end of the sinew on the corner of the shirt and use that to draw an arc on my shirt. Now I'm going to fan fold this line that I just drew and I'm going to continue the fan folds on either side of this line. I'm going to hold everything in place with some kite string. I had someone contact me the other day and ask me how I keep folds kind of like this from pancaking or folding in on themselves. And for me, the easiest way that I've found to do that is to use kite string instead of rubber bands. When the shirt is really soft like this, and I try to place a rubber band around it. Sometimes if the fan folds are pretty tall, it is going to cause the shirt to kind of fold in on itself. If the fan folds are flatter, that doesn't happen as often, but whenever I use kite string, I think that helps to hold everything in place without it folding in on itself quite as bad. I can pull the kite string fairly tight, and so it's gonna hold everything in place really well, and I wind it down the shirt as I'm folding the shirt. And then after I've folded and tied all the shirt going one direction, I wind the kite string back up the shirt and tie it off where I originally started the kite string. So it kind of has a double layer of kite string. By the way, if you're wondering, I usually purchase my kite string from Ace Hardware. They have great kite string. You can purchase it online or in the store. It comes on a cardboard dowel. And like I said, it has a little bit of stretch, but whenever I tighten it down, it doesn't loosen up like some string does. I have a link down below in the description for this video for the kite string that I purchased from Ace. I'm to an area where I have one sleeve and I'm going to just fan fold this sleeve and incorporate it into the rest of the shirt. Okay, so I'm almost done and I have made it to the very last sleeve. I'm gonna put some fan folds in that sleeve and then I'm gonna fold it up and into the rest of the shirt to make it a little bit easier to tie.
I put the shirt aside while I was working on some other projects, and so the shirt is now totally dry. It doesn't have to be, but I like to tell you the condition of the shirt when I begin to apply the dye. Okay, so I'm going to incline ice dye this shirt, so I've placed it inside of a piece of vinyl guttering, and I don't have a whole lot of extra space in this piece of guttering. But to make sure it doesn't slide down, I'm going to go ahead and add a piece of kite string to the very end of the shirt, and then I'm going to clip that piece of kite string to the very end of the guttering. That's going to keep the shirt from sliding down even further in the guttering. Okay, so I'm starting down at the very end with Plum Wine from Dye Spin. And this is a new color. I've never used this color before. I started to apply the dye and then I decided since the shirt was totally dry, I was going to go ahead and lightly spray a little bit of soda ash solution over the top of the shirt. That'll help the dye to adhere a little better. So right at the very end of the shirt, I'm placing the plum wine from Dye Spin. And then on this shirt, I'm going to leave quite a bit of white on the shirt between the stripes of dye that I'm going to place on the shirt. I want to alternate placing a purple and then either a gray or a black color. So after the plum wine, I'm using Dharma's charcoal gray, then leaving a space and using old rose from Pro Chemical and Dye. The next color I'm going to use is black from Dharma. And this black was one of the Holly dyes from 2022. I don't think you can purchase it from Dharma anymore unless you purchase in large quantities, but there's a Facebook group called Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace, and I'll put a link down below in the description for this video. And most of the time, somebody out on that group is selling this dye. What they do is they purchase those special order colors and they buy them in the larger quantities and then they sell them off in like two ounce, four ounce, eight ounce, etc. So that's a great way to try some of the special colors that Dharma's had over the past few years without having to buy the really large quantity. Okay, so after using the black, I used some deep purple from Dharma. Then I went back in with some more charcoal gray. Then I used black magic from Happy Cat and some more black. And I continued that all the way down the shirt. So if you'll notice over on the left hand side of the screen, I have all of my color swatches and the old rose that I have is a liquid color swatch. Some of the other ones are ice dyed color swatches, but that one is a liquid one. And I've had this color for quite a while, but I just haven't really ever used it. Someone once told me that if you're ordering from Pro Chemical and Dye and you see a color that's name starts with like old or dusty or spicy, vintage, anything like that, that those colors are great color splitters. And so far they haven't been wrong. Every color that I've purchased, you know, that has that kind of a name is usually a really good color splitter. But for some reason, whenever I did the liquid swatch of this color, I just wasn't really attracted to it. So I haven't used it. I don't know that I've ever used it on a shirt. I made the color swatch and then I think I just kind of put the color aside. So I'm really curious using it for ice dyeing like this, what the color looks like, because I really think that this color will go well with the ones that I've chosen on this shirt. So I'm excited to see how it splits. This is also the first time that I'm using the Plum Wine from Dye Spin, and I've used Black Magic from Happy Cat a couple of times, but not a whole lot. I also haven't used the Black from Dharma a whole lot either, so I'm excited for all of these colors on this shirt. I think it's going to have a lot of really cool color splits. Okay, so now I'm going to add an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the dye and add on some ice.
After I get the ice on the shirt, I'm going to go ahead and place one end of this piece of vinyl guttering down inside of this container. And this container is one that doesn't have the really tall sides. It's only got sides that are about seven inches tall. So that's going to place this piece of guttering at an incline. Then I'm going to place this container aside and allow the ice to melt. Since the ice is coming right to the very edge of this piece of guttering, I'm going to place a container underneath this edge that's hanging over the side too, just to make sure if any of the ice falls off, it doesn't get all over the place. After the ice melted, I still had some undissolved dye left sitting on top, and so I went ahead and added a second layer of ice to the top and allowed it to melt. Then I waited about 48 hours after the second layer of ice melted before I began rinsing the shirt out. Okay, so as you can see, the back I still have a little bit of white left, but I purposely wanted to leave the white lines in between and allow the dye to move. I didn't want to put too much dye on this shirt, so I'm going to trust the process and not be nervous that I have some white left on the back. So to rinse the shirt, I started rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I untied the shirt and I warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I went ahead and did my normal soaking process instead of just continuing to rinse. And for that process, I run some really hot water in my utility sink, add a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent to the water and just allow the shirt to soak. When the water cools off, I change it out and I continue that soaking process until the water is almost clear. When that happened, I put the shirt into my washing machine along with some Dharma's Professional Textile Detergent and I washed it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so let's see what it looks like. Well, I think this one looks really pretty. I like the addition of the gray and the black in the shirt because it gives kind of those darker color splits and I think that busts up the purple, kind of gives some interest to the shirt. I really love this design too. I think every time I make one of these shirts, it very much reminds me of a peacock. How the colors kind of meet right on that dividing line or that folded line. And those almost look like the eyes in peacock feathers. I just think it's a really cool design. I've made this one for quite a few years and it's one of my favorites. I also really love the way the dye moved on this shirt. I just think the long streaks of dye are gorgeous. As far as the dye colors that I was kind of watching because I wanted to see how they split, um, this is probably not the best shirt to kind of see that on because there's so much going on on this shirt. The first color I was watching was the plum wine, which is the one that is down at the very corner of the shirt and up at the very top on the shoulder of the shirt. And I don't see a whole lot of color splits, but I think it's a beautiful color. As far as the old rose, um, I don't know. I can see it a little bit on the sleeve of the shirt, but I think it kind of gets lost in the rest of the shirt, or it just kind of adds to some of the lighter purpley colors. The black and the black magic are some of the darker colors, and I think those are both gorgeous. Like I said, there's just a lot going on on this shirt because there's a lot of color splits. So that's kind of my fault. I mean, if you want to really see what one single color does, you don't put it on a shirt with a whole bunch of really pretty color splitters. But I do love the full effect of all these colors mixed together. So I think this shirt is absolutely gorgeous. But what do you guys think? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.